T show this week. I have an amazing guest. I know him as Bill Kopecky. You may know him as William Kopecky. He's in so many different bands and he's the guy that taught me how to play bass and how to appreciate things like Edgar Allan Poe and I figured I wanted to share everything he's doing with you, uh, my loyal fan base, my loyal viewership as it were. Um, so I'm going to get right into the interview because it's a really good one. So uh, stick around and we'll be right back. Are you a horror fan? Do you like wearing your fandom on your shirt and showing the entire world? Then head over to FrightRags.com and get all sorts of cool memorabilia and t-shirts to show the world that you are a true horror fan. From enamel pins to collectible cards, socks, and t-shirts with your favorite horror icons on them. Head over to FrightRags.com and when checking out use promo code PERT10. That's P as in Peter. You are T-E-E-10 and save 10% on your order today. Hey everybody, welcome back to the program. We're going to be talking right now with the man who taught me how to play bass, but don't blame him. It's not his fault. Uh, he's currently in France uh, doing the, the rock and roll thing. Uh, my bass teacher, my, my teacher teacher, and my longtime friend, William Kopecky, thank you so much for being on the, on the program. Thank you very much for having me, Ron. It's a uh, it's a real blast to have you here on video too. Yeah, yeah, great. It's the last to see how it goes. Yes, yeah, so the last time I saw you was pre-pandemic at uh, McCullough's, and you were playing there. Uh, that seems like forever ago. Yeah, that was what in August, I think. Yes, yeah, I believe that was so. Mid-August, and I played there with um, Snarling Adjective Convention. Yes. <laughs> Yes, you guys love the long names for the bands. How are how are are you holding up amid everything that's going on? Yeah, just fine, really. Yeah, I'm fine, totally healthy, no problem there. Oh, that's good. And uh, confinement kind of suits me, really. You know, because it's nice just to stay home and do my thing and not have any kind of pressure to go out. That's kind of nice. But you know what? I, I to, <laughs> to be honest, I break the confinement about once a week. I've got a good friend, uh, his name is uh, Dimitar Dimitrov. Maybe we'll speak about him later. So I've got a couple of projects going on with him. He's got a really nice recording studio about a two minute walk from my place. I, <laughs> so I won't tell anybody if you won't. And I record, you know. <laughs> well, as long as you guys are staying six feet apart. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, and I would, I would also wouldn't call it a social gathering. It's work. And uh, if and the, the government in, the, in Florida has deemed the, the world wrestling entertainment as essential. So I see music as essential. So there you go. You're essential. Wow. Do you think I'm as essential as the, the wrestling? You know? I, I would say more so. <laughs> because I can't watch wrestling in my Jeep. Ah, yeah, I, can, I can listen to you in my Jeep. Okay. There you go. So, so things are okay down in that in that <coughs> in that respect. I'm um, glad you're safe and everybody, all oh, your loved ones over there are safe. And how are, how is everybody? How's the family over here doing? Do you know? Do you check in with them? Or? Everybody's fine. Yeah, everybody's fine. I speak with my mom who lives in Racine, and I speak with her uh, a couple times a week, and she's fine. She chills at home. You know, she's retired now, so <laughs> she's hanging out with her dog, doing well. And I'm in touch with my brother Joe a lot, who's also in Racine. And um, he's fine, too. He's had to cancel a lot of shows. He plays with uh, Imperial Fall. Don't yes. Know if you know I saw that. them. I worked the door at McCullough's, and I saw them. So, yes. Oh, yeah. When was that? Did oh, that was right before. That was like people were making jokes about uh, about the, 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 the virus at that point because, oh, it's a Chinese thing. Or it's, a, or it's, a, it's an Eastern European thing. And, uh, yeah, so it, uh, it was right before then. And I was really sick, too, when I did it. So I'm wondering if I had it. And I just, oh. and I just went to JJ's place and was just, like, hacking all over everybody. But, no, um, that's neither here nor there. Now, um, I remember way back in the day when you were still teaching, you were, a, you were, a, were you, you, you were 
Mary Ann's a, what would you call her, student teacher? Yeah, right. I was a student teacher. I was still going to university at that time. That was back in, what, 95? Four? Around, yeah, some, you know, in the, in the before oh, times. Sure. Yeah, in the before times. And yeah. uh, I remember very distinctly, and we talk about this all the time, how you walk in with your long black coat with Gene Simmons on one lapel and Edgar <laughs> Allan Poe on the other. And uh, it always used to be like, well, that's just, I mean, come on, that's just fucking cool. Let's be real. Well, if you think about it, that's kind of the, the summary of my life, if you could say. If you could take two images to symbolize my life and you take Gene Simmons and Edgar Allan Poe, <laughs> put them together, and that's kind of me, right? You know, I, I would not uh, disagree with that statement <laughs> at all, at all. And uh, <clears throat> I wrote, I've always felt bad because when I, when, you know, you went out of your way and you're, you're granted it was a, 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 I wasn't getting them for free, but you went out of your way to teach me bass and I immediately went into punk rock where everything you taught me didn't matter. Well, <laughs> I tried wrong. We have to, we have to have the resistance, right? We have to have some form of, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, it, it's it's funny, though. I mean, if you look at Racine as a whole, musically speaking, I mean, look at the people who've come out of there. You, uh, I don't know if you remember Matt Vollmer. Yeah, I, I never was really tight with that guy. He is, like, but, his bass playing is, um, I, I would put him right below you. And I, and I honestly think he's the best bass player in, in, in at least the Eastern Seaboard. So, I don't know a lot of other bass players, so. But, oh, well, uh, well if, you can, if you can play with no frets, I mean, come on. I look at that, and I'm like, Jesus Christ. Um, so, now, um, but, yeah, no, uh, you came out of there. Uh, Greg Graffin, the singer from Bad Religions from Racine. So, I, not yeah, his dad is a, or was, an English professor. English professor, I can't talk today, um, at University of Parkside. So it's like, yeah, now he's a doctor. So it's a, it's kind of crazy. Punk rock doctor. But um, <laughs> do you find, now we're getting into heavy stuff, do you find that being over in Europe, um, the style of music you do catches on more than it does in the States? Well, in a sense, yeah. Because what, what, when you say what you do, you know, that's very vague because I do a lot of different things wrong, you know. I do everything from playing in black metal groups to really avant-garde experimental stuff with poets and that sort of thing. And um, I think that in the States, at least where we're from, you know, Wisconsin area, if you do something that's kind of a solid rock thing, like take what my brother's doing right. in Imperial Fall, that's real good, straight up <coughs> metal, a lot of groove, a lot of bounce to it, played well, and it goes over beautifully you know they're doing well my brother as you know he's kind of a rock star in 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 the area which is great and it's well deserved you know um but the thing is here i'm not really doing that sort of a project you know right i do lots of different projects and for example some of the videos i sent you one is with a sitar player and a drummer i think that sort of thing is more I don't know. I think the people in Racine or in Wisconsin in general would be a little less inclined to check that out. Right, right. Than, say, my brother's, you know, metal group kind of a thing. You know what I'm saying? No, I totally get here, it, yeah. Here there's there's not a huge crowd for this. You know, let's, you know, I don't want to give you a misconception. There's right. not a huge experimental crowd, but still in all there is a crowd. And um, we can play shows and we maybe are only going to play in front of 20 or 50 people. But still, 20 or 50 interested people, that makes a great show. Right. And so, um, for example, I played uh, recently um, with a poet uh, from Marseille and we played up in Brittany, up in the northwest of, of France. And, um, you know, that's... It was very avant-garde kind of stuff, you know, where I'm scratching the bass and you know, <laughs> this kind of a thing. And he's doing this really avant-garde poetry. And yet there's a public for that. Whereas I think in the States, 
especially Wisconsin, that would be pretty hard to find, don't you think? Just uh, just a little bit, um, especially when <laughs> when there's band, there, especially when Racine especially uh, produces bands like uh, like Two West uh, and play, p- bands like that. I don't know if you had left uh, Wisconsin by the time those guys were around, but. Uh, no, no, I know what they're up to. Yeah, um, I'll have to send you a link to an interview I did with them. It was um, to 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 put it lightly, a shit show. Um, but okay. yeah, it's fun. Um, but then you have other bands that kind of. I mean, there's there's some bands that kind of do things on a, um, uh, are, are kind of uh, not norm. Okay, I just they're not the norm. Okay, like Snooky. You remember Snooky? Um, yeah. They yeah. they took a lot from like. Faith No More and Mr. Bungle and stuff like that, and they and that's not exactly um, commonplace in in Wisconsin. You know what I mean? So right, right. But uh, but you kind of take it as this, and they played a bit and everything, and they did pretty well for themselves. Yeah, I keep trying to get them to get back together, and they just won't do it. So it's like, well, well whatever. That is what it is. Did you find when you first moved over there that it was easy to adapt to the culture and and all that kind of stuff? Because they say that is if you, what is it you if you stay somewhere long enough, you learn enough of the language just to get by. Like, have you just kind of become part of of France at this point? Well, in, in fact, I'm French now. Oh, I applied for a French nationality and I got it. That was a couple of years ago because you know, Ron, it's been 11 years that I've been in in France here in the south. Um, I live in Marseille, and pretty big city, about a million people, second biggest city in in France. And to answer the question, yeah, it, 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 you know, it's a totally different vibe. You know, this is a Mediterranean vibe here. Mm-hmm. Most people, when they think of France, they think Paris. Right. I imagine some guy in a beret kind of a thing, you know, looking kind of sophisticated, walking around, you know, reading a slim volume of poetry or <laughs> something like that. Smoking, smoking a cigarette like this, you know, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And Marseille, it's a totally different vibe, you know. It's, it's very Mediterranean and uh, kind of rough and ready in, in some parts, but okay, it, it is what it is. But anyways, you, you really have a hard time imagining a place more different than Wisconsin. Because <laughs> here there's, it's really hot. There's a lot of sun. Wisconsin, you know how that is. You know, that's really hardcore. Blink and the weather changes. Yeah, yeah, right. And another thing, though, I, I, maybe it's because of the weather. But in Wisconsin, I find the people hardworking. You know, when I was playing in bands there and everything and working with all the musicians, almost everybody was really, like, concentrated and hardworking. Here, it's a little different because, for example, in, in the States, when I meet to, to maybe start a new project with some musicians, we'd get together and we'd play and immediately we start talking about what we're going to do. Okay? Really direct and right. straight up and honest. Here it's different, you, you, and it took me a while to learn this. When you show up to meet somebody, you know, you have to have a drink and then a smoke and a drink and you speak about the family and blah, 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 and all this kind of thing. And you don't even talk about what you're there to talk about. It's just getting the vibe of the person. And then if the vibe is good, then maybe in a couple of weeks or a month, then you get together for another drink and another smoke and another conversation. And then you maybe talk about the project. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> that is very laid back. It's very laid back. And you've got some incredible musicians here, but the mentality is really different. Yeah, I can. But um, it's okay because uh, the people I've managed to, to work with, the French musicians I've managed to find who are really good, uh, are also very dedicated and easy to work with. And, you know, they don't have a typical Mediterranean uh, mentality, you know. Well, that's a, that, I mean, that's, that's a good thing. And you're right, you don't think of that kind of stuff when it comes to, to France at, at all. I mean, that's, uh, I guess, uh, well, I mean, you're, you're closer to more, more of the Mediterranean country countries anyway in that kind of area so yeah it makes sense yeah. it makes sense now you no, go ahead I thought, I, I, when I arrived here I thought that everybody was going to speak at least a little bit of English right because I had been to Paris 
uh, several times before I, I moved to, to Marseille, uh, just for kind of visits, even a bit long, you know, two, three months. And um, in Paris, almost everybody speaks at least a little English, so you can have a basic conversation at least. Right. But here in Marseille now, it's totally different. Almost nobody speaks English. And when I arrived in France, I couldn't, I couldn't speak French. I could say just very, very basic little s stupid things that are totally useless in a, <laughs> in a real conversation. And so that took a lot of time to, to adapt and to learn French, uh, etc. And when I arrived here, I was, man, I was already getting kind of old. I was 38 or something like that, 39. Oh, if that's old, huh? Well, to start learning a language. Fair enough, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a little old. Just a little. Know? Bust out that Duolingo. Uh, what? Qu'est-ce que tu veux? Sure. Okay. I, I took a, I took French in seventh grade, and I got a D in it, and that's just because I could remember a little bit, and then I, it all left me. It all went poof. Because I said, I live in Wisconsin. I'm never going to France. And I should probably learn Spanish if I'm going to survive in the States. But um, now you've been playing bass for how long now? A million years. Okay, so I'm 50 now. And I started, I got my first bass on my 14th birthday. My father bought me a bass. So that makes 36 years wrong. That's a long time. Now you're starting to venture, <laughs> you're starting to venture into um, like playing out with hand out or hand cut uh, like paper collages and stuff like that. And uh, I, I got to check that out a little bit. I didn't have too much time to see all of all, everything that you sent me. But uh, what what got you into that, and how is it going to you know kind of go with toward like merge with the music? Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for asking. So about maybe two years ago, I started doing hand cut collages where I just take magazines and old books and I cut out pictures and I rearrange them in different ways. And for some reason, I just had this strange motivation to. <laughs> to do this um, and I really like doing it and the first maybe 20 30 collages I did were just total crap uh, but then I started I think kind of hitting the vein so to speak you know and about 300 400 collages later um, I'm getting a bit better and I've had um, an exhibit here in Marseille and I've uh, done another show where we projected my collages um, on a big screen during the concert. Oh. And um, believe it or not, today, the, the 18th of April, I was uh, supposed to be flying to Japan to do a, a tour with my group Telescope Road, Telescope Road Duo, in fact. And... Um, one of the shows that was lined up, unfortunately, we've had to cancel, um, was to do, there's a, a, a French cultural institute in Tokyo. And the guy who is one of the organizers of like their cultural events is a fan of the group. And so he spoke to me and he saw on the internet that I do these collages. And so he said, well, what do you think about coming and maybe doing like a, a kind of presentation in front of, um, you know, Japanese people and, and who want to learn a little bit about, you know, French culture or whatever. Uh, what do you think about coming and doing a little exhibit and then doing a kind of presentation? And then after we'll do a concert where we project the images of my collages uh, of the group, um, behind the group while we're playing the show. Right. So things are kind of, you know, developing a little bit in that sense. And I've even sold several of them. Uh, so that's, that's kind of a nice little outlet for me. Uh, because in the past, I don't know if you remember this, Ron, but around the time I was, I first met you, I was really into writing poetry. Yes. And I had seven books of poems published, you know, by these really little independent publishing houses, totally underground, man, back in the 90s and uh, maybe early 2000s, too. Um, but anyways, it was nice to have that poetry as a kind of break from music, uh, also a creative outlet. Right. 
but just something to give myself a you know a break from playing the bass or something. And so now I found the collage thing too, and uh, it's nice because um, I'm able to not only just have a little fun, but also branch out a little bit and use them during concerts, etc. And I was supposed to do another exhibit here in Marseille at a, a real cool place, um, but we had to cancel it because of the coronavirus, and that was set for next month. So we'll see what happens. We'll have to uh, reschedule everything, I imagine, in the autumn. Well, they're saying that, um, and this, that's just here in the States, they're saying that uh, concerts, like big massive ones like Coachella and stuff, you won't even see anything like that until fall of next year. Yeah, I imagine. And maybe in Europe that might even be extended a little longer. Oh. Because, as you know, Italy, France, and Spain have all been hit really hard, especially Italy. Um, so it's kind of a sensitive thing in this particular area. So I doubt we'll see any huge concerts and things like that for, I don't know, at least... Uh, six months or a year or something like that yeah they're saying that the vaccine won't be ready till spring for, well if everything goes right they will have it for for the public uh in, in the spring of 2021 so okay. but yeah but we'll see what happens now um yeah crossing fingers um i mean my life hasn't changed much i still sit on the couch and, and book guests and do a talk show that's i mean and and watch old george romero movies because why not you know, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure someone like him is way more appreciated in France and and Europe than he is over here. Well, he's got a he's got a, a cult following. I think everywhere around the world. You that's know? true. Yeah. That's um, true. But yeah, because yeah, it's it's true. Cinema, as as you know, cinema was was invented in France. You know, um, in a little city called La Ciota, which is really close to where I live. And that's where the first films were made. And uh, so anyways, France has always had a very close connection with cinema. And so I think the people in general there appreciate <laughs> cinema, right. not movies. You right. Know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. like uh, they're okay, more okay with Godard than they are with Michael Bay. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Very good at that. So, yeah. now, France is really big with the arts. Do you, do you feel, I mean, Wisconsin's always going to be home, but do you, do you feel, like, uh, more of a kinship with France, like, artistically speaking? Well, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, I suppose so, because, um, you know, France is such a culturally rich, it's, it's so culturally rich, uh, so many great poets and painters and classical composers. But we can't forget that rock and roll was invented in America, right? And that, that's, that's huge in my heart and it's, it's in my blood and my bones, you know. I'm a rocker at heart right. and I always will be. And so I've got this thing now where I'm, I, I love the appreciation for the arts that we can find here in France but I like the rock and roll kind of rawness that you've got in the States and you really don't have that here I can imagine the I people can. here are, are a little more reserved better dressed and in general they're they give you your space you know leave you alone and in America people are more like yeah rock and roll and they're more like friendly and outgoing and, and that sort of thing and, and i like that too you're a man of multi, of two worlds sir that's, that's yeah that's it that's it because you know to tell you the truth when i'm here i i don't feel like you know 100 percent french because it's uh, i'm american too you know right. and the big part of of my background you know big part of my life was spent in america i'm very american on the other hand, when I go back to America, I feel not so American. Like there's there is a distance. Like I'm on the outside looking in. Right, 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 right. Well, that makes sense. I mean, you're uh, you're you're kind of uh, you're kind of stretched between two countries. Now, uh, I know you're a busy man. We all got stuff we got to do. I have to take off here in a minute. But I have one last thing for you. I want you. Okay, this is gonna obviously this goes out worldwide. Okay, um, but. You know, where we're, we're seeing boys down deep in our heart, 
and a lot of people don't get to talk to you. Do you have a message for the people in Racine who will be watching this? Oh, my. Message for the people in Racine. On the spot. On the spot. On the spot. All right, guys. So here's the deal. I was born in Racine, lived a long time in Racine, or at least in the southeast of Wisconsin. And every time I go back, yeah, there are things we don't like about Racine, but still in all, some of the people there have just the greatest hearts, the biggest hearts, and there's some really wonderful people there, and I've got great friends, and I miss you all. There you go. And I hope I see you soon, and I'll try to come back and play um, as soon as I can. Because I remember when you guys played McCullough's, yeah. that place was packed, and 90% and of the people were there to see you. Let's be real. Well, that was fun. That was a fun show, and it was great to play. That was the, the, the first time I had played with my brother. In God, oh, how long? God, I remember, that was, I think, 2011. We did a memorial concert for my younger brother, Paul, who passed away. Right. And uh, I think that was 2011, Ron. Yeah, and that was the last time I had played with my brother. That's crazy. That's crazy, yeah, yeah. That's cr so from, I, I want to... I want to thank you so much for being on From Nasty Habit, and people will have to look that up because I'm not going to explain it. From Nasty Habit to, yeah, to, to so, many, so many projects in France, uh, I want to thank you so much for being on. It's been a real honor, and we'll have to have you back. And then well, we're going to take a break, everybody. When we come back, we'll have a live video of uh, it's Telescope Road, right? The video you sent me. Yes. That's it. Okay. We're going to yes, we're going to have that. Uh, we're going to have that, and we'll be right back, everybody. The following is a performance from the band Telescope Road that William is a part of. This was filmed long before the lockdown began. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Telescope Road. <laughs>
This episode of the Ron Partee Show is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash Ron Show. Over 150,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. So head over to audibletrial.com forward slash Ron Show today. That's the show this week. I want to thank everybody for watching. Please head over to ronhaswebsite.com uh, for all back episodes or watch it on YouTube. Uh, also, we have t-shirts for sale over there. There's a donate button if you want to support the show and a Patreon. I mean, there's all sorts of ways to support the show with the current climate going on. Uh, I want to thank you all for watching. I want to thank William for being here. I want to thank him for providing the clip for uh, Telescope Road. Uh, I want to thank everyone for watching again. Um, you are all amazing, and I will see you next time.